Welcome to Grizzly Habits. Today, we're in Moab, Utah with our Stealth Nomad 22 FK. We're gonna tell you all about it, coming right up. Now, as the years go by, it seems like the machines get bigger and wider. And with that, it's a lot more difficult to park these in a toy hauler. The options you have today are to use a fifth wheel with a separate garage, which are difficult because not only are they big and heavy to tow, and you need a diesel to get them to your campsite, you're very limited as well on the campsites you can take them to. So fifth wheels are great, but if you want to go adventure, you have to know ahead of time exactly where you can fit with those big rigs. Aside from that, you have your class A, class C motorhomes that are another motor to maintain. They're great. We looked at a lot of class C's, but you still need a separate trailer to tow your toys. Uh, and then there's another motor again to maintain with those class C's. So that leaves the half ton towable option, which is what we were looking for. And unfortunately, there's not a lot of trailers out there that can fit these new machines, especially as wide as they are. The new Pro R's, and I have the Pro XB with long travel on it, and additional work to the hubs that make it a little bit longer. So overall, I'm 81 inches wide, which really narrows the options that we have to fit this machine into a lot of toy haulers until we found the Stealth Nomad 22FK. Now these trailers are awesome and essentially they're an enclosed trailer that are built out with living quarters. So you have garage space that's designated for your machine that turns into a sleeping area and then you have a kitchen and bathroom and all the bare necessities up front along with AC and heat. So it's exactly what we were looking for. Now this unit comes in at about 9,900 gross vehicle weight. So it is at the top of the threshold for the half ton. They do have smaller options, but the width and the height change depending on uh, the size of those trailers. So really the 22 FK was our only option to fit this wide machine and also be half ton towable with our GMC Sierra 1500 AT4X. Now there's quite a few different options available on stealthtrailer.com and you can see all of the different configurations with length and width and even the parking spaces in the garage that can help you identify which trailer is right for you. Um, there's even different color packages that come available. We chose of course the full black but they have multi-tone, there's red, there's white, there's all kinds of options available. So you can really customize this trailer to be exactly what you're looking for. Now starting up front, um, I love when trailers have the electric jack. Uh, this makes loading up so much easier, especially when you use the equalizer hitch and you have to go up and down a few times just to make sure you get your bars set in place and everything hooked up. So these electric jacks make a huge difference when you're loading your trailer, just to help with that energy too of one less thing when you get to the campsite, when you're tired from the long drive. Uh, so it's great that this is an option for the stealth trailers as you can put these electric jacks on. Um, aside from that, it does have two propane tanks. They are the smaller 20 pound propane tanks. I wish they had a little more space to put the larger propane tanks on. Um, we've been out in the trailer. It's been a little bit cold here in Utah for a couple trips now, and we've already ran out of propane where uh, normally with those larger tanks, it seems like you can get a little, well, of course you can get a little bit more out of them because they're a bigger tank. Um, I understand why they couldn't fit the tanks in here because even these uh, propane tank covers are crushed in here literally um, so it's like they have to jam this in it would have been nice if they maybe had a custom solution or figured something else out to put these tanks in here because it is crammed in now what i do like about this trailer is the front storage um, a lot of your your big toy haulers out there they have side bin storage, which is pass-through storage, which is great. There's a lot of room to put camp chairs. It's at a lower access point where you're not doing a lot of bending and lifting upward. But inside this door, there's actually a ton of storage. And there weren't a lot of videos online that showed people actually using this storage space. I have a lot of stuff in here and there's actually still room and it doesn't add a whole lot of tongue weight. But up front, you do have your 
um, water tank here, which it holds 43 gallons of water in the front of this trailer, which is a lot of extra tongue weight, especially for those half tons. So you do need to be cautious, especially when you're towing a big machine. Um, it comes with one 12 volt battery. I wish they would just do the dual setup out of the gate. So we'll probably upgrade to six volt, um, but it is solar prepped. So you can plug in a solar panel and keep the batteries topped off. But inside they do have a shelf system. So really your bottom tier shelf is where your water is and then where your battery is stored. You don't wanna put anything aside there just in case those cables get bumped that show you the level of the water inside the tank. And of course you don't want anything sitting on your battery. So they've built a kind of a wooden barrier with an access shelf here so you can get in and you can work on the battery or even just see your water level in here. Um, there's two shelves above that. We've pulled the spare tire and actually put it in the front. There's nowhere to mount it really in the back of the trailer. So we decided to put it up front up here on the top shelf, up and out of the way. And then of course our camp chair is up on top of that. Aside from that, I have all my levelers, the, um, the sewer line. We have our patio, uh, uh, patio rug kit in here, some garbage cans, and of course tools up front, electrical cords, a lot of storage room up in the front of this trailer, which is great. On the side of the trailer, we have our hot water heater. There's the electric on off switch out here. You can run it straight on electric, or you can also run the hot water heater on propane. Um, your refrigerator access point back here, uh, if you uh, need to maintain or work on the refrigerator, you'd go through these panels. There's two outlets uh, and a TV mount with a cable jack. So this cable jack runs over to the cable that's at your site. So you can actually bring your inside TV out. And if you wanted to sit out under the stars and watch a movie, you could do that out here. Uh, so it's actually kind of cool that they thought ahead and let you put this bracket. It does have the electric awning. This one I believe is a 16 foot awning. Um, and it comes out quite a bit to give you that shade, especially if you had the TV out here, it'd protect you from the elements as well. And there's even LED lights underneath the awning. So it gives a little bit extra glow at night. If you have that awning down, it kind of reflects up off the top and gives you uh, a, lit, uh, a lit patio. And then of course the outdoor speakers um, that work inside and outside. There's dual zones, so you can play your music outside, inside, or both. Uh, so a really cool feature that they have in this trailer. So you can just hear your tunes outside. The back of the ramp door has your dual locking latch and it requires you just to put your own master lock on with a key, which I've seen some trailers that have it built in. Um, it would have been nice for the price of these trailers if they spent the extra money and had the built in locks. Um, so we have a lot of padlocks for the front, for the back. It'd been cool if we just had one key that could get you into all of these, but otherwise not a, not a lengthy story to tell about the back end here. It has your ramp door, which will open up and then it has a little bit of a beaver tail, I guess, that comes off the back just for an aesthetic look where your lights are up top. LED lighting all around, which is really cool. It just looks good pulling down the road uh, and it's gonna last a lot longer than your old halogen bulbs. Up in the front of the trailer on the driver's side, there's your water inlet port where you can either fill the tank or just hook straight up to the city water uh, to fill your lines. There's a shower in this trailer, an outside shower. So if you need to rinse off, you need to spray the dog a little muddy before they come inside, you can do that out here. Uh, hot and cold piped into the uh, shower port in the front of the trailer. This trailer does have 30 amp. So that 30 amp will power the AC, the microwave and everything else inside. Uh, and that will hook up to your shore power on the side of the trailer. Uh, the cable inlet, which gives you the cable TV on the inside of the trailer where the TV is mounted and also outside. If you want to move that TV to the outside patio, uh, you'll have cable in both points. Now this trailer does have two separate holding tanks, one black, one gray. They're 43 gallons each where the trailer holds 46 gallons. That's including the water heater, I believe. Um, so you have two separate tanks that hold your waste. And in a lot of other trailers that I've owned, they've actually both come into a single outlet. So normally you'd empty your black water first and then you'd flush the hose with the gray, where this trailer has two separate tanks and two separate valves. So you have to empty your black. There's no um, port to flush your tanks, your black tanks. So really going up and flushing your toilet to clean it out is the only option or even running a hose up into the toilet if you wanna make sure it's cleaned out. 
um, and you can't flush it with gray. The gray outlet is a separate port, which is a disadvantage because now you're unhooking your sewage and moving it over and you can't flush again that black tank waste with your gray water. So that's kind of a, a, a downfall with the trailer. I don't know why they have the two separate tanks or why they couldn't plumb them together. Um, but that's one thing that I would improve if I were to look this trailer over again. All right, let's check out the inside of the trailer. So when we open the door, we do have the stowaway stairs, which are really cool. It gives you a little more ground clearance, which I don't know if it helps because the plumbing on the other side is pretty low. But nonetheless, it's one less thing that you have to come fold down and worry about on the bottom of the entryway. So this is pretty easy, one-handed latch. And the leg rails are also adjustable. So you can actually uh, adjust one leg higher than the other if you're on uneven terrain, um, or you can extend them and retract them uh, to make sure that they're always hitting the ground. Now this is what's really cool about the 22 FK. So the FK stands for front kitchen. There's other options with bunks up front or they have uh, double beds in the back, but this front kitchen gives you a condensed area where you can do your cooking, you have your refrigerator, uh, and it's up out of the way so you have as much cargo space as possible. But it really has all of the essentials, everything that you would need in a trailer for um, even a long weekend or extended periods of time. Below we have our Dometic refrigerator that actually works on um, AC, DC, or propane and it auto adjusts. Uh, I believe that's a new feature from Dometic, which is really cool. So you don't have to worry about changing over the refrigerator, it just automatically detects um, which power source you wanna to use to cool your food. So whether you're hooked to the, the vehicle, you want it on 12 volt, uh, whether you're on propane out in the, uh, the sticks, if you're boondocking, or if you're connected up to the shore power, uh, it's going to automatically detect. There is a two burner stove, a uh, gas stove that you can uh, do your cooking on. One the left side's a little bit bigger than the right side, so you can actually fit some pretty decent sized pans on here to do your cooking. There is a glass uh, storage lid where you can still use the countertop as extra storage space if needed. If you're not uh, gonna be cooking, you can put your cereal boxes or whatever else on top here. Uh, microwave up top, it's just a standard microwave. It's not a convection in this unit. So um, it is just simply a microwave. Uh, so good for reheating your food or microwavable meals or even some popcorn if you're gonna sit and watch a movie outside under the awning. Stainless steel sink, it's actually a pretty big sink where uh, there's plenty of space to do your dishes um, or uh, even wash your hands or two people at once up here in this area is fine if you need to rinse off your hands really quick before dinner. So tons of space up front. Um, and as far as storage space goes, you have two options. You have your overhead storage and now there's a lot of videos online of these empty. This is how ours looks. It is completely packed full, but we do have everything we need from cereal snacks, which of course the cereal um, we'll bring down here. We'll leave it out. So all of our like Cheez-Its, crackers, cereal, we'll put out on the countertop, which frees this area up a little bit more. And this is where we have our paper plates, our coffee, maybe some snacks, uh, utensils, that's all up top. And then down below, this is where we store all of our pots and pans, our spatulas, uh, tongs, salt and pepper, first aid kit, garbage cans. Uh, that's all stored down here below. And then of course your access to the water heater is right behind these panels. So your winterization is actually pretty simple. You don't even have to pull any panels out. Well, like some other trailers, you have to pull some panels to get to that, that pump to winterize where this is just straight back here, really easy to get into. There are, there's two outlets in the back corner back here where you can plug in your coffee pots or anything else that needs the electricity and you want it stored out of the way. And then up front in your control panel, you have, of course, your, your fuse panel up top here that has the circuit breakers for the entire unit. This is that stereo we were talking about where there's the inside and outside speakers. Um, this has a uh, USB in, auxiliary in, it's Bluetooth, so you can connect just about anything to it. And again, those speakers work both inside and outside. Down below, we have our holding water storage tank levels, uh, as long as you are, as well as your battery level down below, and then your water pump switch right here. 
This is your water heater. You can turn it on where it'll either power off gas or you can convert it to electric just by flipping the switch on the outside of the trailer and it'll run off the shore power. Uh, dual USB charging ports here so you can plug your phones in. The awning in and out. And then this is your external LED lighting for underneath that awning. And then aside from the kitchen, we have our front bathroom where of course there is the full size toilet. And then there's the shower um, along with a vanity to store some of your uh, toothbrushes, toothpaste, or any personal items up out of the way. So there's a little bit of extra storage to put your bathroom items uh, and toiletries up above the toilet. And this is where the magic happens. So the FK, of course, the front kitchen, what that means is you get the all the rest of the trailer as storage space. So the 22 FK has 17 feet of storage. So we can pull the machine all the way up to the front, which gives us plenty of room to store all of our extra gear, even our mountain bikes. So the way that we set the trailer up when we're here is we actually have an extra piece of carpet that we brought from home that we roll down on the floor. Um, so you're not walking on top of the recessed e-track that's in the floor. That e-track is really nice for strapping the machine down, but it's not comfortable if you uh, happen to stub a toe over it. So we bought some or brought some extra carpet from home that we have rolled out on the floor. Now there's two couches that fold down uh, and then we put a table, of course, in the middle here where you can play games. You can uh, even use it as storage space on top of that table, but these couches fold up giving you uh, some extra room between the wheel wells. Uh, and then of course, underneath the bed, there's the Happy Jack bed that we bring down and we leave it down the entire time we're camping. And then we use this bottom area to store our mountain bikes. Uh, so we keep them out of the elements from outside. We don't have to worry about locking them up. We can just store them under here. There's outlets uh, to charge the e-bikes so we can plug them in and they're stored out of the way and you don't have to worry about them. So we actually take advantage of this extra space under the bed uh, and we use that to store uh, mountain bikes and even some of the extra things that go in the truck like the tailgate pad, um, tables, and even our suitcases we store down here. So up in the front corner, we have the TV, which is on a swivel mount. It's also removable again to where you can take it outside underneath the awning and watch the movies outside. Um, or you can leave it as is or store it up against the wall. Up top, we have our furnace here, which is actually pretty powerful. And um, what's cool about this furnace is if you sleep on the happy jack bed, you know, heat rises and these vents are at the top of the trailer. So it travels along the ceiling of the trailer and then it keeps you really warm, almost too warm sometimes in that happy jack bed. But this furnace actually works really well to keep the trailer uh, completely warm. And there's vents going towards the backside into the bathroom. So you can actually heat that shower up before you get in or get out. So you're not cold um, when you have limited space to dry off inside of that, that small bathroom up front. So um, I actually turn the furnace on when I'm showering. So that way it's nice and toasty when I get out. I don't have to worry about freezing. All right. So one thing that we actually realized is that there's 82 inches between the wheel wells and our machine is about 80 to 81 inches wide. However, with these couches, they have brackets that stick out a little bit further uh, to where it takes up some of that space between the wheel wells. So between the couches, it's 78 inches wide. So it does take off about four inches. So we needed to remove one of the couches so we can fit at that 80 inch width into the machine. Now, your overall height with this trailer from the garage uh, floor all the way to the Happy Jack bed is about 78 and a half inches tall. So really you need to fit within 78 inches wide and 78 and a half inches tall uh, to not have to make any modifications. However, by removing the couches, you can get all the way to 82 inches. We only needed to take one of them off. So we are getting to 80 inches. We are going to make some quick disconnects for this couch so we can make this process a lot easier. Oh, and we also had to back the machine in just because I think these are designed for like Jeeps that have a lot of front end weight.
And that's a wrap with the Stealth Nomad 22 FK toy hauler that is half ton towable. For more information, of course, go to stealthtrailer.com. And as always, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell button for constant notifications for when we post our next product review or podcast video. Thank <laughs> you.